And hello there! I'm Funky Monkey, and welcome to another edition of Funky Monkey at the Movies. And with me as ever is my nameless producer. Hello. And tonight, it's incredible that we've been to see The Incredibles 2. <laughs> Satisfying film. Definitely an extension, but definitely not a rehash. That's sometimes the case with sequels. Some sequels can be just a rehash of the original, and sometimes you have to wait for like the third instalment to get something really different. But this one, they took it in a different direction. Sort of veered off towards Elastigirl. And Elastigirl is not Mr. Incredible. She definitely has more finesse. Definitely more methodical. Less sort of indie ploy. More Batman Gambit, if you understand what I mean. Less make it up as you go along and more think it through completely. Don't know about that, really, considering the way she was chasing that train. Uh, that seemed a bit improvised. Yeah. Well, there's not much forward planning that you can do when you're chasing a runaway train. You know, I was always going to try and have a movie with a set-piece action sequence that was going to be a runaway train, and it was going to be a superhero movie too. But anyway, back to the movie at hand, and yeah, that was an interesting set-piece. Well, the villain. Uh Uh-huh. The screen slaver. Uh Uh-huh. And this is a bit of a spoiler. Well, the whole backstory, the uh, whole reason for their villainy was really because, well, it really ties back again to Syndrome. It's a bit of a spoiler, spoiler alert, but Syndrome took a load of supers as uh, fodder to try and get his uh, Omnidroid ready to fight and defeat Mr. Incredible so that he could sell it onto the world. But this time, the fantastic salesman, the pitchman, wasn't the villain. He was almost one of the good guys. And the one with the imagination was almost the villain. Which is kind of unsettling. I wouldn't have said almost. One of them was a good guy, and one of them was the villain. Yeah. I think the villain was more of a, almost a minarchist, Lex Luthor kind of character, almost. Had the same kind of core belief system of Lex Luthor. Humanity needing to be strong, and not having other people take their powers away, and, you know, people having their own power. And I thought they were more relatable as a villain. So I I kind of understood a little bit where that villain was coming from, even if I didn't agree completely. Mm. They were good for that. And overall, to borrow from Dash, I thought that was awesome! The entire movie, really. Yeah. Um, It had a lot of good, as it had before, the family time sort of things. It was interesting to switch the characters round, I think. So they had Incredigirl. Elastigirl. Girl. Yeah. Elastigirl doing, being the main character. And then Mr. Incredible having to perform in a different role. Being the house dad. Yeah. <sighs> and then having the trials and tribulations of family life. Um, the challenges of everyday life. Jack-Jack was pretty hilarious all the way through. Kind and of. his fight with a raccoon. Yeah, the raccoon fight was pretty funny. Rocket would not approve. <laughs> I've kind of forgotten that they did that. They were still thinking he was normal, whereas we all knew from the end of the first film that he got powers. Yeah. But it can the film contain the kind of frenetic high octane action that you can only do with CGI, really? And I like how they do Elastic Girl's powers. Kind of, I know some of it is just stretching and things, but they kind of seem to do more with the idea of an elastic person than, say, you get with Reed Richards. Or when you had Plastic Man, he was a bit crazy like that as well. Uh, well, Reed Richards does sort of shape himself into a load of shapes, or at least in Lego Marvel 1, in which he appeared, he did. But of course, Lego Marvel 2 had thousands of characters, but the Fantastic Four were nowhere to be seen because they're owned by Fox now, even though Fantastic was reportedly a terrible, terrible movie. Yeah, I imagine it was. 
And I mean, again, this is a bit of Fantastic Four film because it touches on more the the core of what makes a Fantastic Four the Fantastic Four, which is like a family thing. But yeah, I mean, I love the action in this film and the story was pretty good and all the acting was great. I can't really fault it as films go. Um, the only thing for me is, in some ways, it was kind of predictable that it played out the kind of person hiring them was the villain again. So, like, in the first film, you had Syndrome, who kind of hired Mr. Incredible the first time, and then he turned out with the baddie. And now you've got these two people come out of the blue who hire the supers, and they're all happy to see the supers and everything. And then one of them turns out to be the villain. I kind of thought, when they were there, I thought one of these two is going to be that villain. But I couldn't tell which one. I just oh. kind of sensed it. I was pretty uh, bang on, pretty sussed it out pretty quickly. Yeah, you thought it was the woman. Yeah. Oh, spoiler alert. Yeah, spoiler alert. It was the woman. Yeah, Evelyn. Evil Lynn? As I said before, their whole reason, the twins, their father, and their father had put a lot of faith in superheroes. And when they'd gone, when they'd gone to superheroes in their time of need... They'd already been killed by Syndrome, because Omnidroid. And so, that feeds into another thing. Well, I mean, at that point, I mean, unless I missed something, it could be that they didn't come because um, Supers were illegal at that point as well. Yeah, well, Gazer Beam, at least according to uh, us, one scene in uh, the first movie, had been campaigning to try and get Supers legal again. So that they could come out of hiding. Yeah. In a newspaper that uh, Super's rights guy, whatever his name was, who was actually Gazer Beam, had disappeared. Because, of course, he was defeated by the Omnidroid, which killed him. Yes, obviously. And all in all, Syndrome has a lot to answer for. Yeah, but he wasn't in this film. Yes, because he was dead. Yes. I mean, that was a, a thing, actually. For a minute... I thought, what's going on here when she just shot that villain with the flare gun? I thought, are they killing the villain because, like, they were on that plane and obviously she went out the window? And I thought, have you just killed the villain? That's a little dark. But then obviously she was just falling and then it was the whole saving her thing. Yeah. Syndrome got no such reprieve. He was just straight up dead because Kate. Yeah, well, it did kind of serve him right, though. He was his own enemy there. He brought it upon himself, really. So What, for having a cape? Well, for having a cape and for being the villain, really. And for going to the superhero's house. And for abducting their baby. Yeah. You don't abduct a baby. You know, you don't steal a baby and then raise it to be evil. Yeah, especially not a baby with 20 powers. Or, or possibly 20 million. We don't know yet. Yeah. Those other supers were pretty cool that they introduced in their own way. Void. Yeah. She was so nervous. And she kind of totally squeed out at the Elastigirl. Apart from that reflux one, he was kind of gross. Yeah. I mean, being able to barf up molten lava. That doesn't come in handy. No. No, it was as bad as that guy from X-Force in Deadpool 2 who just, like, spat acid or whatever. Yeah. Some powers just really aren't uh, useful, but then... Well, they're kind of useful for causing chaos or something, I suppose. Yeah, maybe some powers are useful for causing chaos. Yeah. Uh, but before we do get to finishing, there's a couple of things I'd like to mention. Uh-huh. Notably, the dedication to Bud Lucky. I don't even know who that is. Uh, he was Rick Dicker in the first movie. Uh, he must have passed away sometime this year. Yep, yeah, must have. Probably. He was also, for those of us in the know, a respected animation director with a long and storied history. And he also directed uh, the short that came with The Incredibles 1, Bound In. Ah. Uh. A personal favourite of mine, Bounding. Yeah. Steve Dick died. 
He can create Spider-Man, don't you know? Yeah. Yeah. And of course, we have to mention the music. As good as ever. Yep. Very good. Very entertaining. Went well with the um, high octane action. They never actually mention what the time frame actually is when these movies are actually set. I always get like a 60s slash 70s vibe from them. More 60s, I think, actually. Yeah. Which makes me wonder about some kind of future Incredibles with the 80s where it's kind of like they're a, kind of grown up. It's kind of like a Silver Age to sort of characters. I like the fact that he picked up kind of right after the Incredibles 1. You know, I mean, because it's been quite a few years since the Incredibles 1 and this movie just picked up straight away. Mm-hmm. Which is a, something you can do in CGI films, I suppose, because you just draw them again. Yeah, 15 years later. All you have to do is find a new little boy to be Dash. So, final thoughts then. Um, uh, can't fault it, really, at all. I mean, I can't... You know, pacing was really good. Um, it was interesting that they switched the character dynamic around. Uh, music was good. The villain was kind of relatable in their own way. Um, interesting side characters. They had a lot of heart with the family side of things. It was just really good. So could this possibly be a 10 out of 10 from you? I'm going to go with 9 out of 10. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I can't really fault it. There's a few things I would have liked to have seen for myself. I really like to see a villain punched and punched and punched into the ground, but then again, I'm kind of horrible like that. He got punched, uh, he got shot out of a window with a flare gun, high up in the altitude where they could have died horribly. It's not a repeatedly punched and bloodied face. But other than that, yeah, I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. Seeing as it's a superhero film, yes. do you think it goes on the ladder? Yes. Okay, so what are we seeing this year? Deadpool 2? Yeah. Black Panther? Yeah. Infinity War? Yeah. And uh, then this. Okay. I'm going to go. Incredibles 2, Infinity War, yeah. Deadpool 2, and Black Panther at the bottom. Yeah! New champion! Incredibles 2? Yeah. Black Panther? Deadpool 2? And sadly, Infinity War at the bottom because it was only half a movie. It was only half a movie. Fine, fine, fine. So, with all that unpleasantness out of the way, this has been Funky Monkey and his nameless producer. All of the e-begging and other links are in the description. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you at the movies. Bye.